Okay. Um, and lastly is this, uh, pi, uh, Prime Timers uh, Valentine uh, Party. It's going to be Tuesday, this Tuesday at 6 p.m., okay? And the cost is going to be $6. I believe if you want more information about the events for the prime timers, you can go ahead and talk to Pastor Ted. And I'm pretty sure you have all the information to give you for that, okay? And then lastly, uh, there's, uh, if you, we need uh, children and workers, okay? And so somebody who's, who's, who's wanting, okay, not we don't, we don't want you being forced to do it, okay? We want, if you want to do it, okay, to help impact these children, okay? We need workers on Sundays and Wednesdays. And so if you want to help out and bless some students, bless some kids, and be part of that ministry, I guarantee you will bless their socks off if you just sign up for that, okay? Hey, guys, um, once again, enjoy service. Are you guys expecting great things to happen? Yes. Hey guys, why don't you guys stand up with me? Stand up. God bless. Yes. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mighty and so much stronger? The King of glory, the King of power. every other name that at that name at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father 
Would you say with me the name that's above every other name? The name is? Jesus. Let me ask you a question this morning. Is Jesus Lord of your heart? Would you say it with me and declare it? Let's just say Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord of my heart, of my life. And I'm here today to worship and exalt his name. Father, we thank you for this day. And Lord, we come with one heart, we come with one mind, Lord, to worship you, to lift you up and to magnify you. Lord, today we speak your name, Lord, <laughs> over our lives, over this gathering, Lord, over our situations, our circumstance, those, Lord, that are watching with us online. And we just invite you, God, to glorify your name in all the earth. Glorify your name in this place. God, we give ourselves and everything about our lives to you. I pray, Lord, against hindrances and distractions today. I pray, Lord, that you would help us to fix and to focus our thoughts and our eyes and our hearts upon you. Glorify your name here in this place above every life in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would you say his name one more time? Jesus. Jesus. Say it one more time. Jesus. Jesus. Let's worship the Lord our God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah.
and treasures that fade are never Is now satisfied here in your love. Oh, there's nothing that's better than you. There's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing. No, nothing is better than you. Sing that again. Oh, there's nothing. nothing oh there's nothing that's better than you there's nothing better than you oh there's nothing nothing is better than you Father, if we think, if we think, if we ever thought there was something better than you, Lord, forgive us because we were wrong. Father, there's nothing better than you. Nothing even comes close. If we think there's something better, we're wrong. Just sing that to him one more time. Oh, there's nothing that's better than you. Oh, there's nothing. 
that's better than you. There's nothing, no nothing is better than you. You're more real. You're more real than the ground I'm standing on. And you're more real than all the wind in my lungs. Come on, sing that again. Than the 
Praise God. Do you belong to Him this morning? Do you believe that we have the opportunity to bring to Him all of our needs? Do you believe that we could call upon Him to touch our physical needs, our financial needs, our spiritual needs? We could cast all of our cares upon Him, for He cares for us. I'm going to ask for our, our board members to come and our prayer team to come. We want to spend a few moments to pray for you and your needs. James tells us that if there's any sick among you, let them call for the elders and anoint them with oil and pray the prayer of faith. If there's any sick among you, they shall be healed. That's a positive, powerful statement there. And we believe in that this morning. We believe in the power of prayer. So we want to encourage you as we just spend some time worshiping the Lord and, and praying. If you have a need, we want to encourage you to come forward. We want to pray with you for your need this morning. So we know that God is able to supply the needs that you have today. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Father, we praise you. Father, we worship you. Abba, we belong to you. Praise God. You belong to him this morning. Praise God. Cast your cares upon him this morning, for he's here to supply your need today. Whatever your need might be, he is here today. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Yes, people are coming. If you have a need, if you have a need this morning, we encourage you to come. We want to pray with you. Our God, our healer. Our provider. He's here. He's here. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, we are so thankful that we can pass all of our tears upon you. Oh, Lord, we know that you care for us. Oh, yes, Jesus. Pour out your spirit, Lord, upon us today. Praise God. I belong to you.
ist aber. I belong to you. Your thoughts define me, cause you're inside me, and you're my, you're my reality. You're worthy of it all Worthy of it all For from you are all things And to you are all things You deserve the glory Yes, you do You're worthy of it all it all for from you are all things to you are all things to glory you deserve the glory you deserve the glory some of you this morning who might not be able to come down, come forward, if you just raise your hand, we'll have some of the people, some of our board members, prayer team to come to where you're at this morning because we want to pray for you and your need this morning. God. Father, this morning, we thank you for the opportunity to come into your presence. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity, for the power of prayer to touch lives, to change and transform. Lord, we know that you are the great physician, the healer, and by your stripes, we are healed today. Lord, this morning, we lift up several in our congregation who need a physical touch in their bodies, Lord. Lord, I pray for Jim Brockman, Lord. I pray that you'll touch him. Dennis and Joyce Johnson, minister to them. Cleo Jones, Marcy Brown, Josiah Brown, Dan Friesen, Lord. Uh, Roger Allen, Fidela Zuniga, Don and Helda, Helen Wilder, Dwayne, Ron and Pam Thiessen, Lorraine Smith, Mary Preston, Jean Newberry, Rose Marion, Larry Link, Marjorie Humefeld, Hazel Henneman, Paul Dickerson, the Cooley family, Robert and Teresa Burns, and Anna Wilkins. Lord, again, we are so thankful that we could call upon you to know that you are our great physician, our healer, 
And Lord, we thank you, Lord, as we cast our cares upon you, that you are the one who's supplying our needs today. And we'll give you thanks and give you praise. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. What a joy it is to be in the house of the Lord this morning. We're glad that you are here today and uh, just worshiping. We're glad that for you that are here in this house worshiping us today. And we thank you and glad that you are here online and watching and listening online. We're glad that you've joined us as well. If you're a guest this morning, first time, or have not yet filled out a, a, a guest card, we would encourage you to do that so with, uh, we get some information on you and, and, and also to pray for you and your needs. And on the back of that guest card, there is a, a prayer request there. So if you have any prayer requests, whether you're a first-time guest, guest or not, you could still fill, a, fill out one of the prayer requests there, put it in one of the boxes there as you leave, and, and uh, we will pray for you and your needs today. Praise God. The Lord is good. I want, you know, I want you to just turn and, and smile at somebody close to you and tell them you're blessed, okay? Can you do that? I, I, I'm very careful how I say smile and tell anymore, but, but just turn somebody close to you there. Just, just say, so you're blessed. You're, you're blessed. Praise God. And we want to go ahead and dismiss our boys and girls to, to Children's Church at this time, for God is good. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise God. It is so good to see each and every one of you here today and uh, trust you sense the presence of the Lord. I believe God has a word for us. Yes, I believe God. Somebody, well, we'll see, Pastor. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. I just, I, I do want to encourage you just as a fellowship and as a body of believers, uh, just want to encourage you to um, reach, reach to one another. And uh, when you don't see somebody, pick up the phone and give them a call and, and check on them if you would. And uh, as you observed in prayer this morning, I'd asked Pastor Ted, we were making a list and uh, checking it twice. And, uh, but there are just a lot of people who are walking through a lot of different things right now, and we just want to encourage them, be an encouragement to them, and lift them up and pray. Pray for them in their circumstances, and God will be glorified. Amen? Amen. Well, it's a good-looking bunch. Good to see you. Good to see you. Will you take your Bibles, and would you please turn to Isaiah chapter 43? Isaiah 43. Change is coming. <laughs> change is coming. It is coming. We are not always excited about change, but I want you to know, friends, as the very children of God, we can be excited about change. Amen? Amen. <laughs> amen. By the end of this, I'm, I'm expecting that well, there'll, there'll be a big roar with the amen. Right, Joshua? Oh, yeah, he's with me. Praise God. <laughs> I want to begin by reading a verse of Scripture. It comes out of Isaiah 43 and verse 19, familiar to most of us. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. One more time. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. How many of you know that God desires to bless you? I want you to know that if you, if you struggle with that statement today, I believe that God wants to speak to you by His Spirit. He wants you to know beyond a shadow of a doubt with great confidence that God is good and it is His desire to bless His children. It's His desire to bless your lives. Scripture reminds us that we have a Heavenly Father who loves to give gifts to you and to me. And they are good gifts. Scripture encourages that we can trust him in all things. But I want to ask you a question. If, if you knew 
that there was something in your life or about your life that was blocking you receiving this blessing or this gift from the Lord, how many of you would want to know about it? If there was something or someone that was in the way of you walking in the fullness of the goodness of God and what he desires to do in your life, maybe you could say it this way. How many of you in here are looking for the Lord to bring breakthrough in some area of your life? When we talk about breakthrough, we tend to, there tends to be that attitude or that heart that's, that's like a, we're a little bit of desperation in that, right? I need breakthrough in this area of my life. I need breakthrough in my finances, or I need breakthrough in this relationship, or I, we could say it in multiple different ways, or I have a habit or something that's my life. I know I need that broken off of my life. If there was something that was standing in the way from you receiving God's blessing and God's best, you'd want to know about it. You'd want to be informed. And I want to tell you this morning that God's word speaks to this very issue. God's work, word speaks to you and I and says and expresses to us that God is good. He wants to bless his people. And he doesn't want you and I to miss out on his provision and his blessings and the breakthroughs that he desires to bring over our lives. We could take it one step further. How many of you know God wants to do something new in his church? He wants to do something new through his church. But how many of you know that there are things or there can be situations or things before us that keep the flow or the blessing from what God wants to do from being among us or within us or flowing through us? Wouldn't you want to know? Wouldn't you want to know? I would want to know. I will say to you again, God is good, and it is God's desire for you to know his blessing. It is God's desire to bring breakthrough in your life. Think with me for a moment. Where is it that you need a breakthrough? I noticed on the bulletin there's a little bit even bigger place for you to take notes, right? So as we're walking through this message, maybe the Holy Spirit drops something upon your heart. Maybe you're, you're in, a, in a situation or a circumstance, and it's just like, Wow, this is a blessing I really need from the Lord right now. I'm, I, I'm filled with anxiety. I'm filled with worry. I, I need the peace of God in my life. Maybe you're in another circumstance, again, as we talked about before, and, and you need God to break through. You need God to show up. You need an answer. You need a provision. I want you to just open your hearts to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Allow him to speak to you today, and I would encourage you just jot it down and see as we walk through the next couple of weeks. See if God might speak to you and give you a key to unlock that blessing that you might receive it, that you might walk in it, that you might be refreshed by it. God is good. Say it again. God is good. God is all good, right? Joshua, that's what we're saying all the time. He is all good. But if something is hindering us from realizing that in our life, we want to know about it. We want to know about it. Do you remember in the book of James that we're instructed in the first chapter that if any of us lack wisdom, let us ask of God who is generous, who gives liberally that that we ask for. So let's pray this morning. Father, I just pray for revelation today. Lord, as we continue in this theme, Lord, of change is coming, we recognize that, Lord, you have great things. You have new things. Uh, Lord, you have blessings and deliverances and breakthroughs that you desire to bring in our lives and our families and your church. And, Lord, we don't want to be hindered. Lord, we don't want there to be any blocks, Lord, that, that keep us, Lord, from being able to partake of that that you have already provided for us. God, we know your heart towards us is good, so Lord, help us to believe that. Help us, Lord Jesus, to trust that truth. And Lord, help us today. Lord, help us even in the coming weeks, Lord. Help us to see, Lord, if there are any places of hindrance, Lord, if there is, uh, God, there's things that we don't see, give us wisdom for our way that you, Lord, would be glorified. And God, that you would have your way in our life. And that, Lord, we would experience the blessing and the best of what you have made possible for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. What blocks the blessing of God in our lives? 
You know, there are many different things, and over the next few weeks, we're going to go over some of those, but there are specific things that the Scripture brings to our attention, and I want to remind us as we move into this that, you know, how many, you know, oftentimes we miss out just because we don't know, right? For lack of knowledge, what happens? People perish, right? And we need to remember that we are people who need to be in the Word. We need to understand what God's Word says concerning our lives, who we are, what our privileges are, what our inheritance is as His kids. We need to understand the promises that are there for us. And as you and I are in the Word, then we will not be ignorant of our provisions, but we can stand upon that Word and see God's hand move on our behalf. So I want to bring to you a few different things that I've, I've observed and seen in my life that I know you've experienced in your life, but sometimes we don't recognize it when we're waiting for the breakthrough, when we are looking to God for the breakthrough. And the first one is this. If there's a roadblock or a barrier or a hindrance oftentimes to us receiving what God has provided for us, sometimes it's because of unbelief. Everybody say unbelief. Unbelief. Unbelief, an interesting word when we think about it. Because of unbelief, the Israelites <laughs> missed many blessings because of their unbelief in God and His ability to provide, His ability to protect, His ability to make a way. When we look to Hebrews chapter 3 and 4, we find a passage that, that kind of directs us in this attention. It talks about their unbelief and that they lacked moving into the rest of the Lord or the promise of God because of that unbelief. In fact, the scripture in chapter 3 verse 12 says, See to it, brothers and sisters, that none of you has a sinful, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God. I'm going to read a few verses, and then I'll explain it to you. Verse 19 of chapter 3 then goes on, and it says, speaking of the Jews, God's chosen people, see, they were not able to enter into God's rest, into the promised land, because of their unbelief. Let us therefore make every effort, this is in verse 11, every effort to enter that rest so that no one will perish by following their example of disobedience. My friends, when we are in places of unbelief, when we are doubting who God is, we're doubting God's word to us, we're doubting his provision, we're doubting what he said he would be and what he would do, it can lead us into, it can lead us into places where we disregard what he has said and we begin to put our trust in other places, in other people, and oftentimes it leads us to disobey. It leads us towards disobedience obedience. And that's exactly what happened with the Israelites. The Israelites <laughs> were moving in a place of unbelief, and it ended up leading them to have to wander in the desert for 40 years. 40 years. They were disobedient to God. And we see this pattern and cycle that happens again and again in their life. Their, Israel, their unbelief leading them to disobey God and stumble into sin. How many of you know that happens with us too? When we're not careful, when we don't trust the Lord, it leads, you know, sometimes we're, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do with this, but you know, I think if I just make this adjustment on my taxes, <laughs> nobody's going nobody's to catch it, nobody's going to know, but but if I make this adjustment, it'll be, and we're not trusting the Lord for his provision. We're not trusting him that he said he will supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory. We take matters into our own hands and we sin. We see these things, the temptation for this in our life all the time. But what I want you to notice here is the scripture talks about God's rest. You know, when we are in a place of belief versus unbelief, we're able to rest Think about the anxiety and the striving and the fret that comes when we take matters into our own hands. When we begin to think we know more than God knows. When we begin to doubt him and doubt his character. It leads us again to make those decisions that don't bring about rest to our body, mind, soul, and spirit. But instead disturbs us and we become weighted and we become bound and we find ourselves not experiencing the blessing and the gift and the provision, the breakthrough that God desires to bring. I've told this story before, so for those of you that have heard it, 
forgive me. Crystal and I, when we were married, we were married for nine years before Bethany was born. And in that nine years, we love kids, we wanted to have kids, but it wasn't coming together for us physically. And we began to just you know, we had always thought about adopting children and all of that kind of stuff, but we were like, it had to be one or the other, so we connected with infertility specialists and all that kind of stuff, and, and I remember one time my sister saying to me, why don't, you, why don't you just open the doors to both paths and see what God does? And for us, it was, a, it was a moment, it was a God moment of, it doesn't have to be one or the other, it could be both, it could be, I mean, let's, let's let God lead us in this. And I remember that uh, times Crystal and I would be out, we'd be out walking in the evenings, or we'd be doing uh, different things, and there'd just be a moment where maybe Crystal would begin to cry, because her heart yearned, she longed, his long for young, young, young years just to be a mother. And as we went through that process, we wanted God to lead us. It was our heart's desire, we knew that God cared, we knew that God could provide, we knew that God would provide, but we had to trust Him. As we walked through this process, we had an interesting situation that came from someone in our church who had gotten pregnant out of wedlock, and they came and they talked to us after a period of months and said, we want you to have our, or we want, well, the grandparents or whatever else, we want you to have the baby. We want you to have this baby. And it was a very incredibly giving thought and sacrifice, and we met and, and we talked with some different things. But there was a flag, there was a red flag in our hearts and our spirit that this wasn't God's provision for us. And I remember we wrestled with that. We've been praying and here this is right before us. And to make a long story short, there was a point in time where we sat at a Burger King <laughs> across the table and brought the expression and said, we're sorry, but we are not at peace walking through this. We are so grateful for your expression and gift and, and love that you would trust us with your child. Well, to make a long story short again, just jumping from segment to segment, the reality is she ended up having her baby, and her and the father ended up down the road reuniting and marrying, and they had their family, and it was a beautiful, beautiful resolve. But what if Crystal and I had said, we're going to do it our way? What if we had stepped out? What, would we, what might we have missed? What blessing would we have missed? Would we, we might have missed the blessing with Bethany. We might have missed the blessing with Katie as we walked through those processes. God knew. God had a plan. He had gifts for us. He was going to bless us. He was going to bring breakthrough. And he did. Very shortly after that, we got a phone call, and somebody was saying, hey, 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 you've been selected out of a group of whatever, and, and they would like to meet with you. And we went through a church with ministry, and we took Bethany home the day after she was born from the hospital. It was a beautiful, beautiful thing. And then along came Katie, and God doubly blessed us. Again, my friends, oftentimes, if we move to a place of unbelief, what if we walked the pathway of Abraham and we said, oh God, this is impossible. Look how old we are. Lord, who's going to give up a child? Who's going to? All of those different things. Oftentimes, my friends, because of our unbelief, we step into places again that lead us away from God's blessing and his provision or the breakthrough that he desires to bring. Church, the blessing of a believing church, the blessing of a believing church, of a believing believer, is that you and I can enter into a place of rest. You know, when we truly surrendered everything in our heart to Christ's lordship, when we lay it down and we trust God to make a way for us, when we continue to believe and to trust him, even when we don't see things moving God is faithful, and we come to that place of experiencing again all that he has prepared for you and for me. You know, the place of rest, my friends, is a place that's healthy. 
It's a place where we're thinking right, where we're responding right, where we're living right, where we're at peace. Think about the Israelites. Here they, they forsake going into the promised land the first time, right? They get their eyes on the giants and, and they begin in unbelief to think, hey, we're going to go in there just going to slaughter us, man. They're going to they're gonna annihilate us. The God, you, This isn't going to work. Really what they're saying is, God, you can't really do this. Even though you said, you know, you promised us this promised land, you're really not going to be able to do it. And in their unbelief, it led them to wandering. Church, God is calling us in this day and in this hour to not walk in unbelief. God has significant things he wants to do for you and in you. There are things that he wants to do in and through your family. There are things he wants to do in and through your church. And I want you to know that unbelief can become a barrier. It can become a roadblock to you and I realizing that that we long for, that breakthrough, that blessing that we've been asking for. It was interesting, so I was reading through the scripture, I was reading the scripture where the disciples came back to Jesus, and they came back to Jesus, and this is what they said. They said, why can we not cast out this demon? And Jesus responds to them, because of your unbelief. Because of your unbelief. See, even in the ministry of the work of the Lord, I wonder how many people have forsaken, and I'm not talking necessarily about going and, you know, and casting a demon out, although how many of you know in Jesus' name we have that authority as believers, right? But even in some of the simpler things of life, my friends, that we might look at, sometimes God's calling us or leading us to do this or that. Oh, God, I can't do that. Oh, God, I'll never, God, I can't get up in front of you. I'll never be able to teach a class. I don't even know if I have the gifts Sometimes we move into those places of unbelief and then we miss out on the blessing and the experience. We miss out on the enablement. We miss out on the empowering of God working in and through us to glorify his name. I can't tell you the number of times in my life where I'm just, I often will say, God, you are amazing. There have been times where things have come out of my mouth and it's like, wow, God, that was really good. But those blessings that bless me but also bless other people would be missed if I wouldn't say yes. You know what? I never, I have never ever desired to be a lead pastor. <laughs> I was very content to be in an associate role and to serve my pastor, love the church, love ministry. Man, you should have seen me initially still have those moments of fear and trembling when God asks certain things. But it's just like, oh, oh, God. I remember when we went and took our first pastorate, I said to the Lord, God, if this is what you're saying and this is how you're leading, you have to put it together. And I'm holding on to your shirt tails because I don't know what I'm doing. God was so faithful. But sometimes unbelief, what leads us to miss out on the blessing? It leads us to miss out on what God wants to do in and through our lives. My friends, unbelief can become the hindrance that robs you, that robs us, that robs others. What if a church walks in unbelief? Are we going to reach this community if we walk in a place of unbelief? How could God, really, how could God help us to reach this community? I mean, is that, is that really even possible? Who are we doubting? We're getting our eyes on the wrong thing. We're getting our eyes on ourselves rather than getting our eyes upon God. And we're doubting his power. We're doubting his ability. We're doubting his desire. My friends, what God's wanting to do in this day and hour, he needs a believing church. He needs a people who will not only know the word of God, but we will stand upon the word of God. We will act upon the word of God. A people that will listen for the voice of the spirit and walk in obedience to that. But my friends, when we walk in unbelief, walking in unbelief will lead us to disobey or will lead us to doubting and making choices and decisions that actually don't bring about the blessing of the Lord, but actually bring about the defeat and even greater bondage. We need to be a church that believes. Second obstacle, barrier, or thing that blocks or hinders the blessing of God in our life or the breakthrough that God desires to bring in our life or our families or even in our church is fear. 
In fear and unbelief, a lot of times you, you see these really overlapping and coming together. But I want to remind you of Scripture in 1 John 4, 18. There is no fear in love. But perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. Not made perfect in love. You know, it's interesting today with all that's happening in the world around about us. How many of you know we as Christians, we have no reason to fear? Our hope's in Jesus, right? And God loves us, right? And God will take care of us. But yet there are many believers today who are living in fear concerning the future and what are we going to have to walk through? What are we going to have to face? But I want to remind you that this is what God said in his word. I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you, but plans to give you hope and a future. That's God's heart towards his people. Gary said it last week. We need to believe, we need to become confident in what the Word says. You know what God also tells us in His Word? When the enemy comes against us, when something rises up in the world around about us with trial or with tribulation, the Word tells us that the Lord will take that and He will rework it for good. He'll rework it for our blessing, for our good. So my friends, let's trust Him. Let's trust Him in this. There's no fear in love. We need a fresh baptism of the love of God in our hearts and lives. That confident assurance to know that God will not fail us at any level or at anything. But he will be faithful. Faithful to you and me. I wonder how many times you and I, I wonder how many times we have missed the blessing of God. We've missed what he wanted to do. Because we hesitated or because we allowed fear, to, we gave place to fear and we didn't act in obedience. See, that could even happen in a service. It could be even up here at the end of a service when I would go to give a call and, and if I allowed fear to grab hold of my heart, it's like, oh, nobody's going to respond. What if that had been our choice at salvation? You remember when you first believed when you first gave your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ, what if you had ignored the drawing of the Holy Spirit in your heart and out of fear you didn't respond? You would have missed out on the beautiful gift of salvation and eternal life. Fear often, my friends, keeps us. It keeps us from obeying God's call. It keeps us from walking in obedience to him. It keeps us oftentimes from even asking. You know, there are some people who have, how many of you know, we all have issues, <laughs> right? Right? There are things that each one of us, places of growth in our life that need to take place, right? But sometimes we don't experience God's deliverance in that or that growth or that blessing of new life because we're afraid to connect. We're afraid to seek out help. I remember one time in my office <clears throat> counseling with someone. And I remember they were stump they just kept stumbling around. I knew there was something that they wanted to get to. And I was listening. But they were fearful. They were battling with fear. What if if I speak this out, if I say this out, what's he gonna say? What's he gonna think? Am I gonna be rejected? Am I you understand that. We've all been there, right? The interesting thing in that moment is the Holy Spirit had already dropped in my heart what it was that needed to be said. So just, just say it. Come on, just say it. It's going to lead to your freedom. Just confess it. Just speak it. I wonder how many times out of fear we don't respond in a service. I wonder how many times out of fear we don't make something known to our spouse that needs to be made known. I wonder how many times out of fear we make choices or we make decisions when God has a better way and it's the way of blessing, it's the way of provision, it's a way of freedom. <laughs> some interesting things as I was thinking about Scripture and just some pictures again of this focus of fear 
How many of you remember the story of Gideon? Right, you remember God's people again were, again, the enemy had come in and, and they were being oppressed, right? And God raised up different judges and whatever else that came and brought about victory for them and they'd move into a season of peace and then they'd sin and they'd go back. You know, there's a cycle that all happened. Beginning is one that God called forth to deliver the people. And there's an, in that story, there's an interesting thing. You remember that there, there was a gathering of all of these warriors, all of these fighters, right? And God kept wind, windling it, whittling, excuse me, whittling it down, windling. I'm not sure if that's a word or not. Whittling that down until they got down to a small group. But in that process, I want to read you what the scripture says. Okay, God's about to deliver his people from the enemy. And the Lord says to Gideon, Whoever is fearful or afraid, let them return. That caught my attention. Whoever is fearful or afraid, let them go back. And the group went from 22,000 to 10,000. They're about ready to go into battle with the enemy. They're about ready to bring about the deliverance of God's people. And what does God do? God makes sure that the fearful, that that's removed to gain the victory. Okay, let's go to the Red Sea. Do you remember the story of the Red Sea, the parting of the Red Sea? God leads his people out of Egypt, right? They've been in bondage, slaves to the Egyptians. God sets them free from that. They're wandering through the desert. They come to the Red Sea. Pharaoh's army is pursuing them. And God brings about this miraculous work. He parts the waters. They go through on dry land. Pharaoh's army follows. The waters cover them. And they're, defeat, and they're defeated. God's people are free. God's people are free. But I want you to listen to this. The Red Sea, Red Sea. Fear, the scripture tells us, led the people to distrust. They were at the Red Sea. They saw the enemy approaching or knew the enemy was approaching, and they were fearful. They were scared. And this is what you read in the scripture. (laughs) They were saying, it would have been better for us if we served the Egyptians. And then Moses said to them, fear not. Be not afraid, see the salvation of God. See, that's our natural response. When we become fearful, what do we do? (laughs) Oh, well, it was better back here. I think I'll return to this, or I think I'll find my answer in this, or I think I'll go over here thinking we know better. But church, the reality is you and I don't. His ways, his thoughts are higher than your thoughts and mine. We can trust him in all things, but fear opens the door to distrust. Can God really do this? Can he really save us from Pharaoh's army? Do you see the clouds of dust that are back there? They're coming. This is a great body of water. Even if we go across, we're going to get stuck. What happens if the waves? Trust. I want you to think for a moment about the blessing you desire today, the encounter or the breakthrough that you're hungering or that you're longing for from the Lord. Do you struggle with fear? Is fear, is you opening the door to fear, is it leading you astray or is it keeping you from moving forward to realize that blessing, to realize that deliverance? In Psalm 27, we read these words. I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. I think that's a phrase we need to learn and memorize. I am confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. Some of you need to speak over your marriage. You need to speak over your family. You need to begin speaking to one another as a church. We need to speak that over our community. Hey, my friends, (laughs) let's, let's speak it together. Let's speak it together. I remain confident of this. I will see. We will see the goodness of the Lord. But give a place to fear. And fear will cause 
the heart to grow weak. It will cause us to look other places. It will keep us from stepping out in faith as God leads and as He speaks, as He directs us. God has many good things He desires to do to you, for you and for me. I want to remind you, my friends, that fear does bring great defeat. Saul, King Saul was fearful, and it led him to sin, and he lost his kingdom. There are things that God wants us to experience in our life. He wants to experience our family and in the church, but we've got to be a believing people. We've got to be a people who don't give place to fear, but instead walk in faith, in faith. The blessing of breakthrough, the blessing of God He is good and He wants to pour out upon your life and upon mine. So, the question is this today. How do we position ourselves for blessing? How do we position ourselves to receive from the Lord? How do we position ourselves so the goodness of God can be poured into our life without any restriction or hindrance or or barrier being there to keep us from receiving it? How do we find that breakthrough? Well, my friends, it's really found in doing exactly the opposite of what we just talked. It's not found in unbelief, but it's found in believing. We need to be believing. We need to believe that God wants to do good things for us, do good things in us, do good things through us. We need to position ourselves in such a way that we could receive that blessing from the Lord. Listen to Psalm, well, Psalm 56 reminds us that God wants to do good things on behalf of His people, that God is for us. Listen to Hebrews 11, familiar portion of Scripture for you. Without faith, it is impossible to please Him, for he who comes to God must believe that He is and that He is a rewarder of those that diligently seek Him. We need to believe that He is, but we also need to believe that He is a rewarder of those that diligently seek Him. My friends, God is good, and He wants to bless His people. The Scripture tells us that faith comes by hearing the Word of God, correct? So if we're struggling with unbelief in a specific area of our life, how do we position ourselves? If we want to see the breakthrough, We position ourselves by getting into the Word. We get into the Word. We begin looking at what God has to say. We begin looking at the promises of God. We begin feasting upon that. We begin remembering and recalling God's faithfulness from the past. From the past, why? What are we doing? We're building our faith. We're we're helping ourselves. We begin to sing songs that declare who God is. We sing those songs like, "You have made me glad. You are my Lord. You are my Savior. You're my you're my help in the time of need." You're my victory, you're my peace, you're my provision, you're my high tower, you're my refuge, your wisdom, O Lord. We begin to fix and focus upon who He is, not fix and focus upon what we have, but fix and focus upon who He is and allow faith to be restored and renewed in our heart. We begin listening to messages and to sermons and and things that build our faith. We begin surrounding ourselves with people of faith. Let me say this to you, my friends. If you are allowing a a person to be a major influence in your life who is a naysayer and not a person of faith, if they're one who sows seeds of doubt, I want to tell you there's a great ministry that can take place there, but if it's leading you to places of unbelief, if it's impacting you, you need to make some changes. You need to surround yourself with people of faith, people who will believe with you, people who will stand with you, people who will pray with you and will encourage you in that right pathway. And know that in the world that we live, there will always be people who will want to come alongside to discourage you. And unfortunately, sometimes we find those people even in the church Sometimes they're miserable, and they just want you to be miserable too. 
That kind of goes back to the misery love company, right? It doesn't mean that they don't have need, and it doesn't mean that they're precious. But if you're struggling with unbelief, you need to surround yourself with people that will lift you up. Lift you up. Position yourself. Believe his word. Surround yourself with people of faith. That's for unbelief. If you're positioning yourself, breakthrough will come. Breakthrough will come. But secondly, the other thing I want to say is with fear. How do we position ourselves to receive that blessing that God wants to bring? We learn to trust Him. We learn to trust the Lord. Psalm 23 says, Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all of the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Surely goodness. Do we believe that He is the Good Shepherd? Do we believe that God can provide everything that we need for life? <laughs> you know, there's a song that Jesse has led, led before here in worship where we sing it, all God's promises are yes and amen. We begin singing those things. We begin to meditate upon those things. If you and I are going to position ourselves to trust him, then again, we need to take time to wait upon him. We need to take time to listen for his voice. We need to do as he directs us to do and not give place to fear. Oftentimes, the reason we struggle is fear leads us, rather than waiting on the Lord, Right? As we're waiting for the provision to come forth, we're waiting for the miracle. Rather than waiting on the Lord, we allow fear to creep in. And then what happens? What happens in our life? We're not positioned to receive. The way we trust the Lord, my friends, is to wait upon Him. And while we're waiting upon Him, to thank Him and praise Him for the answers for His provision that's coming forth. See, that's an expression of faith. You sing an old song in the church, you're all I need, you're all I need. Jesus, you're all I need. It's a lot of only believe, only believe all things are possible, only believe. I think that's scriptural. My friends, don't give places to, to fear, but put your trust in the Lord. We position ourselves by trusting Him. Do you remember the psalmist? Yet will I trust Him. The wind could be blowing, the storm approaching. It could seem like everything has just caved in. Yet will I trust Him. The world may be spinning out of control. Yet will I trust Him. God's working this all for my good. God has provision and a blessing for me. I need breakthrough in this area. Afraid to step out. I'm afraid what others might think, what people might say. Oh, my friends, don't miss. Don't miss that work that God desires to do, that blessing that he desires to bring forth, that provision for you. God is good, and He wants to bless you. Why don't you just say that? God is good, and He wants to bless me, and He wants to bless my family, and He wants to bless this church, and He wants to bless the church. Let's not give the enemy place to sow doubt, to sow unbelief, or to sow fear that keeps us from moving forward into all of the new that God wants to do in you and through you, in us, and through us to glorify His name. God wants to make Himself known. So let's remove any barriers and let's open our hearts God is good. He is good. Would you stand?
I just touched on two today. Unbelief and fear. Could it be that 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 you're longing for and you're looking for today from the Lord, that blessing that you've been asking for, that breakthrough that you've been wanting in some area of life, could it be that you've allowed fear or you've allowed unbelief to get in the way from receiving the full blessing of the Lord? Friends, we need to lift our eyes off of what we see or lift our eyes from the natural, what is before us, and we need to fix our eyes on Jesus. We need fresh baptism of his love that leads us to a place of confidence in his word and in his ability and in his care for us. And as we go to close this service today, I just felt led to ask if you're here today and you're longing for a blessing, you're longing for the miracle, you're longing for the breakthrough in an area of your life. And if you've been struggling in either of these areas, fear or unbelief, I want to pray for you, but I want to ask you, would you just step out? Would you just step out and come down here and join me? I just... I just feel led to call you to just come forward. I'm not going to make you say anything. I'm not going to make you do anything. But I want to just pray over you and pray a release from these things. Just, just come. Just come. I know it can feel like a big step sometimes. It can seem even scary sometimes. I'll tell you this. As we make a way... And as we position ourselves, God will be faithful to his word. <laughs> God's desire is to pour out <laughs> in abundance such a blessing that we can't even fully contain it. Just overflow. Let me say one other thing before we pray. Church, when it comes to reaching our community, when it comes to the testimony of Christ going forth, God's calling his church to become real and to take off the masks. How is the world going to know what Jesus has done for us if you and I aren't willing to let people know what Jesus has done for us? Come on, you know what I'm talking about. Hide it under a bush, oh no. I'm going to let it shine. God wants to do such significant things in our lives. He wants to meet us in these areas and glorify his name. So it will be a blessing to us. And it will, woohoo, man, we will celebrate God's goodness. But it's also, though, that message goes through us to this world and other people will say, I need that. I want that. I'm longing for that. Tell me more. Amen. Those of you that are here, and even those of you that may be out there and can't make it up, or those of you online, would you just put your hands in a place of surrender, just in this focus? And as a congregation, can we just do this together? Would you just repeat a prayer of repentance with me? Let's just repent for our unbelief. Let's, let's repent for a giving fear a place. And let's just, again, position ourselves for the blessing of God. Would you repeat after me, Heavenly Father... I thank you for your love, and I thank you that you are good, and you want to bless me. So I confess to you that I have been fearful, that I have been in places of disbelief, and I ask for your forgiveness, Lord, for not trusting you for not asking of you, for not walking in obedience as you have led me to act. Forgive me, Lord. Renew a right spirit within me. 
I position myself now, Lord, for breakthrough, for blessing. Pour out your blessing upon me. Do a new work in me, in my relationships, in my home, <laughs> in this church, and glorify your name. I give you praise, and I give you thanks, and I declare with my lips that all things are possible through Christ Jesus, my Lord. And let me just pray a blessing over you. Father, I thank you for each and every one. Lord, again, who have brought their expression of heart to you this day. God, you know every single need. Lord, you know some of us, Lord, we're in places, Lord, where it just seems impossible. And God, we're, we have no idea what to do. We don't even know, Lord, we don't know whether to, to make the decision over here or over here, God. But we are thanking you that you are the God of all wisdom. And Lord, I pray, again, a protection around each and every one, around their minds, that, Lord, they would not be given to fear. They would not be given, Lord, to unbelief. But again, Lord, that they would grow in faith. And I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would abundantly bless them. Lord, that you would give them that that they ask for. And God, I pray that you give them the wisdom to know what their next steps are. Lord, whether it's making contact with someone. Lord, maybe it's just spending time with you. Lord, maybe it's fasting and prayer. Lord, whatever it might be, lead us in that next step. And we thank you for the testimonies that will come forth. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for your miracles and for your work. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. I have one word from the Lord. I don't know who it's for, but you will know when I say it. Somebody in here has been struggling with the question, what if? What if? What if? That's what's been processing through your mind. It, you, you've been consumed in the midst of your need and your struggle there. You keep going to the what if, what if, and it's leading you to that places of doubt. What if this happens? What if that happens? What if this doesn't? God's asking you to submit your what if to him. Get your mind off of the what if and get your mind on the greatness of who Jesus is. He loves you so. He loves you so. Thank you, Jesus. Can we just give the Lord thanks for his word to us today? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to ask our prayer partners and pastors just to be up here at the front. And if you need further prayer or ministry today, we will be up here to pray with you. Let's go with God and let's see the blessing of the Lord realized in our lives. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus, we love you. Oh, how we love you. And you are the one. Our hearts adore. We love you. Oh, how we love you. Cause you are the one. You are the one. Our hearts adore.